Today is just a quick video to talk about a bit of news or info that we've had shared from Ryan Quillette, who's one of the testers or people involved with HD0. Today, he shared a video on his YouTube channel, basically giving us an overview of some of the new features and specs on the upcoming replacement VRX module. I will put a link to Ryan's video in the description of this one. So if you want to watch it directly, please do check it out. But what I'm going to do in this one is just walk through basically what Ryan does, as well as share some of my thoughts on a few things as well. If you do find this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and please also head over to Ryan's channel. Even if you watch this video, give him a subscribe and give him a like as well, because he deserves far more of both than he has already. Anyway, let's jump in and take a closer look. Okay, so I've hopped over to Ryan's YouTube channel and you'll find the video called HD0 VRX Preview. What I'll do is make it full screen now just to show you the renderings in a bit more detail, but you can go directly to his channel if you do want to check it out. Now, as you can see, the first thing you'll notice on this new module is that it is very similar shape and design to the original Fat Shark module. In fact, it is almost identical in shape and size. It's just a little bit deeper, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video. The module itself is very similar and it's not really designed to be an upgrade compared to the original module more than anything it's designed to be a replacement because the fat shark shark bite module has basically been impossible to get hold of whilst though it's not specifically designed to be an upgrade there are some little improvements and new features here and there which we're going to walk through in a moment the biggest you will notice is that there are now four sma ports on it you have one on each side and two on the top. And this is because they have got rid of the built-in patch antennas and you now have the option of attaching up to four antennas externally rather than using the two before and using the two internal patches. This is going to give you a lot more options for your antenna setup. And whilst it does mean you're gonna to have to buy antennas for use with the module, it does give you a lot more features and capabilities moving forward. Now, antennas can be mounted onto this via this integrated rail system that you can see on the front here. There's little grooves on either side, and this is going to allow you to clip on patch antennas as well as other accessories onto the module as well. It still uses the same mounting option that we had on the original SharkBite module, and it'll be compatible with any existing bracketry that you had for that as well. There is also a number of other little changes on the module as Ryan goes through. The first big one is that there is now an integrated real-time clock in the module, which means it's able to time and date stamp your recordings on the DVR. There is also a built-in microphone now as well, which is going to allow for ambient audio recording on the DVR, allowing it to pick up your voice as you're recording and pick up the chatter that you've got around the flight area. I really like this feature and it's something I liked on having on the Orcas when I tested them and it's good to see HD0 integrate that into this one as well. As I mentioned earlier, on the size of this module, whilst it's virtually the same as the original SharkBite one, it is about two millimeters deeper and this is because there's an all new fan in this for allowing improved cooling. The reason they've had to do this is they've had to change the internal FPGA chip for one that uses a little bit more power than the one in the SharkBite module. This means it will now draw 11 watts instead of 7 watts of power and as a result of that the module needs extra cooling and they've had to increase the depth of it to be able to do that with a slightly bigger fan. That new FPGA doesn't offer any new features. It's simply a component change as a result of the chip shortage, but it has meant they've had to change the design externally of the module a little bit as well. It is still a HDMI external module and the output for that is on the bottom, but they've now also added a new port on there as well, which allows you to use it with Express LRS. If we move underneath, you can see you've got a port here, which is going to allow you to connect up a module for use with the Express LRS backpack function, allowing you to control it via the Express LRS system. The real nice thing about that is it allows you to integrate these two systems into one for HDZ added support for that in the last firmware update and it's good to see a dedicated port for it on this module too. There isn't a built-in module for ExpressLRS but that isn't to say you wouldn't be able to squeeze one in somewhere. 
Overall, whilst this module hasn't been designed to be an upgrade, you do have these few little feature improvements which just make it a little bit better overall and it's nice to see a few little tweaks here and there on it. It's going to be interesting to see what people come up with for this little rail mounting system on the front. It looks quite simple, but it's going to offer a lot of little interesting options. As you can see, he's showing it here with some antennas attached. And as I understand it, the new HD0 FPV goggles that are coming later this year is also going to have this rail system on as well, which is going to offer some nice compatibility between the different pieces of hardware. Overall, there is no major changes here, but there are a few little improvements, as I've said, as we've seen with the SMAs, the rail mounting system, the built-in real-time clock, and the built-in ambient audio recording. It does still have that power connector on the side, and it has that little rocker on the top for selecting the menus. Personally, I would have preferred that rocker to have been replaced with buttons. I wasn't the greatest fan of that. So for instance, if I move up to here, you can see here that it's actually located over there. And on my module, it's a little bit finicky. I would have preferred to have had a proper set of buttons, but it's something I can live with. It's certainly nothing that is going to put me off buying one. Overall, that's pretty much everything we know today. We hopefully should see these modules in people's hands in the next three to four weeks. Carl has already said that they are just waiting on the plastics now and they should be shipping, hopefully not too far into April. As of today, we don't have any pricing on this new module, but I'm expecting it to be somewhere between $170 and $230. I'm certainly not expecting it to be down in that $100 territory that the HD0 Fatshock module was discounted to, but I do think it might come in under $200, but that remains to be seen. And again, things have heavily been impacted by the chip shortage and component issues that we've seen around the globe, and that's going to be having an effect on the BOM cost too. For me, it's nice to see it finally coming together, and as soon as it comes out, I will order one in, and I will be reviewing it on this channel, so if you're interested in seeing that, please do consider hitting the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already, and that way you'll get a notification when the video releases. That's pretty much it from me in this one. If you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this, for instance, to be able to buy this module to talk about, please do consider checking out my Patreon. A massive thank you from me to all my patrons. I would not be able to keep making the content I do make without your support. If you'd like to support us on an individual basis, there is a link to buy me a coffee as well. That way you can do a single donation rather than monthly support if you feel that works out better. That's it from me. Stay safe. Please do let me know what you think in the comments and I will speak to you guys again soon.